This video is part two of a series about what happens when a container of water is spun around a vertical axis. If you haven't already seen it, watch Spinning Water the Experiment. Here's a 10 second version. The spinning water takes on a curved shape, which sure looks like a parabola. But why does it do that? In order for a mass to move in a circle, there has to be a force on it, pushing it toward the center of the circle. This is called a centripetal force. The word literally means toward the center. Think of a bus or car making a right-hand turn. For it to turn to the right, there must be a force pushing it to the right. In the case of a bus or car, the centripetal force is provided by the friction between the tires and the road. If there were no friction, like there's a patch of ice on the road, the vehicle will go in a straight line regardless of what the driver does with the steering wheel. The centripetal force can be any number of things, depending on the situation. Gravity, in the case of planets orbiting a star. The electric attraction of opposite charges between the nucleus and electrons of an atom. The normal force of a race car on a banked track. Actually, that last example is especially applicable here. In the case of the rotating fluid, we can think of the centripetal force as provided by the normal force. Here is a small bit of mass, right at the curved surface of the spinning liquid. The word normal in this context means perpendicular, perpendicular to the surface. That normal force can be broken into horizontal and vertical components. The vertical component holds up the mass against gravity. The horizontal component is the push that makes m go in a circle. In other words, the centripetal force. How strong the centripetal force needs to be depends on three things. The mass of the object. More massive things require more force. Well, that makes sense. The speed of the object. The faster the object is moving, the harder the pull has to be. And the radius of the circle. For a given speed, smaller radii require stronger forces. It's harder to make a tighter turn. But, and this is a big but, for a given angular speed, say in revolutions per minute, larger radii require more force. That's because for a given RPM, larger radii have higher speeds. Here's a frame from the experiment. The turntable at this point is rotating at 114 RPM. So for two bits of mass at the surface, bit number two, further from the axis, needs more centripetal force than bit number one. So the surface needs to be steeper at location two, so the normal force is stronger and directed more horizontally inwards. Sometimes physicists will talk about centrifugal force. This is physicist shorthand for the effect of inertia in a rotating reference frame, a coordinate system that is itself turning. You may have noticed this yourself, if you've been in a bus, car, or other vehicle making a sharp turn. When the vehicle turns to the right, you feel like you're being pushed to the left. But really, your body's inertia wants to carry you in a straight line, tangent to the circle, which would take you further from the center. It feels like a force, so the term centrifugal force is used. Etymologically, centrifugal means away from the center. So thinking of the situation in terms of the rotating reference frame, the so-called centrifugal force pushes the water outwards. That said, I think the better way to look at it is in terms of the non-rotating reference frame, talking about centripetal force rather than centrifugal force. For instance, this provides an easy way to understand why the surface shape is not a semicircle. A semicircular surface would have to be vertical eventually. This means the normal force at this point would be purely horizontal. But it can't be. There has to be a vertical component, upwards, to hold the mass up against the pull of gravity. For a rigorous proof that the shape is a parabola, as opposed to some other non-circular shape, such as a catenary or hyperbola, you have to get into the math. I hope you'll watch my follow-up video, Spinning Water, The Mathematical Explanation. By the way, I can't help telling you about some actual applications of spinning liquids, specifically in astronomy. Astronomers always want bigger telescopes, because the larger the diameter of the telescope, the more light it collects, and the farther and fainter they can see. But large telescope mirrors are hard and costly to make. For a telescope mirror to focus a sharp image of celestial objects, it has to have a parabolic shape. Traditionally, optical engineers made these by taking thick, flat slabs of glass and grinding out the concave parabolic depression, which then gets polished and coated with a very thin reflective surface of aluminum. 
The University of British Columbia, however, has built a six-meter diameter telescope whose primary mirror is made of mercury, you know, that metal that's liquid at room temperatures. The bottom of the telescope consists of a wide, shallow pan that can be spun on its axis on very smooth bearings. Mercury is placed in the pan, spun up, and forms a parabolic surface. This telescope can only look straight up, which is why it's called the Large Zenith Telescope. That's a severe limitation, of course, but there are specific research projects for which that is fine, and this telescope did cost about one-fifth of what a normal telescope of that diameter would. Most telescopes don't use liquid mirrors, however. The University of Arizona's astronomy department has a lab where they make mirrors for giant telescopes using good old glass, but in a very non-traditional way. Instead of starting from a flat slab of glass and grinding the required parabola, the U of A team instead uses a giant oven on a rotating turntable. They melt the glass, and while it's molten, spin the oven. The glass flows into a parabolic shape, and then they drop the temperature. With the right RPM on the turntable, the glass surface solidifies close to its final shape. They still have to do some fine grinding, followed by polishing and coating, but this technique saves a lot of time and money. They make the world's largest single-piece telescope mirrors, 8.4 meters in diameter. The U of A mirrors have been used to build some of the world's most powerful telescopes, such as the MMT, the Large Binocular Telescope, and, currently under construction, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope and the Giant Magellan Telescope. The GMT will have seven 8.4 meter diameter mirrors on a single mount, combining the light they collect into a single image.